So I think we'll we'll get started. Um, oh, okay. Okay, so um, today's lectures are going to um, be some of the final ones on agent-based specific mechanisms, sort of the elements as it were, the elements as it were of the agent-based modeling vocabulary that we'll be covering. Um, and uh, following the discussion of these, we'll be then going on to discuss discrete event modeling for a couple lectures and then some common processes that apply both um, on the agent-based modeling side, on the discrete event modeling side, and on the system dynamics side with respect to things like uh, sensitivity analysis, calibration, et cetera. So um, what we're going to be doing is, in, in a somewhat arbitrary ordering, uh, we're going to be covering dynamic populations right now. By dynamic populations, I mean populations where the uh, population size changes. Um, that's a poor way of putting it when thinking about it in an agent-based uh, way. Why would I say that? Why do I say, um, so from, if, if I were standing here teaching system dynamics, I would say a dynamic population is a population whose size uh, size doesn't, doesn't change over time. Um, I might say that if the contents of the stock stay the same over time, it would be a more precise way to say it. Why? Why is that a poor description for an agent-based model of what a dynamic population is? Does that make sense? Well, we think about a, uh, a model that's in Venson. Let's take, without particular privilege, the SIR model, and people are going between them. If I, if I talked about a situation where those stocks, the stocks of susceptible, the stocks of infected, and the stocks of recovered were uh, staying the same. We, we say that that model's in stasis. We say it's in equilibrium. We say that it's, um, it's, it's unchanging. From an agent-based perspective, though, there may be interesting things going on. For example, it may be that you know susceptibles and uh, have have an inflow and outflow associated with births, and there's different agents in that susceptible category over time. Agents who have different history, a different um, set of characteristics beyond what's indicated by, for example, their their state with respect to this particular infection. Um, within a, and we're going to come back to this in a big way. Um, in a few lectures, sort of thinking about some of the salient differences between, on the one hand, the aggregate modeling, and on the other hand, the individual level modeling. But one of the important insights is that a system dynamics model, an aggregate system dynamics model, essentially gave us a cross-sectional depiction of the population over time. By cross-sectional, I mean that it's summarizing, at a given point in time, the state of people within that population. Indeed, Bensim lets you interrogate, interrogate it for how many people are in the infected or susceptible to the recovered state at a given time. And then it will give that to you maybe one time unit later, two time units later, so one day later, two days later, three days later. And you'll get counts of maybe how many are susceptible, infected, recovered. That's cross-sectional following a particular individual. By contrast, in an age-based level, we may really want to follow individuals. And sometimes this is very important for reasoning at a practical level about things. For example, if we have a set of people who are in the infected um, category, and maybe we have an SIR model where there's you can recover from, you can lose immunity, and you go back from the recovered state to the susceptible state over time. That model may be in equilibrium over time. It may be that it's unchanging in terms of the number of susceptibles affected its recovered. But it could be that it's a different set of people over time who are in the infected state, for example. And one thing that may be of interest to us epidemiologically is whether 
It's a matter of a small fraction of the population getting infected, recovering, losing immunity, and getting infected again, and just cycling back and forth, whereas most of the population is remaining uninfected, versus a situation where the infection is pretty widespread across the entire population. And in other words, is it a small set of people getting infected many, many, many times, or is it a large part of the population each getting infected an average of, say, once. There can be a big difference between those in terms of um, the, the implications for how you want to handle an outbreak, for example. And within a, a system dynamics model at an aggregate level, we can't really easily ask that question. Is this a large fraction of the population getting reinfected or a small fraction getting excuse me, a large part of the population getting infected once or a small fraction of the population getting reinfected many times. That's a very important difference. So the system dynamics model at an aggregate level will give you a series of cross-sectional depictions of the state of the population over time. An agent-based model will allow you to follow individuals in the population and easily ask questions about the trajectories of those individuals. The the, the histories or the biographies, as it were, of those individuals. For example, you could ask the question, has, you know, what fraction of all individuals have gotten more infected more than three times within the past year? And in a world where sometimes, as I put it earlier, the tail wags the dog, there's certain individuals who get infected many times and then most of the population very, has very few infections. That may be really important. So we're going to be talking about dynamic populations here, and, and we're going to be focusing, given our agent-based perspective, on, on the issue of agents joining and leaving the population. It may be that the stocks are unchanging, but as long as agents are coming in and leaving, that may have implications which are of significance for our intervention. Okay, so... Um, at this point, we've introduced basic mechanisms for creating populations of pre-specified size. You've done that in the, the exercises at home. You've done it here in class. We've created networks from pre-specified set of network categories. We did this last time. We looked at several different types of networks. Scale-free, looked at distance-based. We looked at ring lattice and small world, etc. Poisson random. However, we've done this all for pre-specified sizes and uh, networks which are fixed. And in the world, more broadly, we're often interested in open populations, populations where there are processes which change the number of people in the population. These may be deaths and births, but they could be immigration or emigration, etc. And there's a lot of research that has been contributed to suggest that network dynamics, the fact that, that uh, people, for example, change partners over time, impacts in a big way the spread of sexually transmitted infection. Why might that matter? Why might the fact that people change partners make a difference to the spread of sexually transmitted infection? Can anyone give me a, a sense of that? Why would that matter compared to if people kept the same partner for a, for a their life? Exactly, exactly. So, so if there are concurrent partnerships, and this is a technical term that can be used to mean you're in two, a given person's in two partnerships at once but also extends to the notion of if a given individual switches partners, in either of those cases, there may be spread of infection away from, from a dyad, a particular pair, to others. And it can be set on its way throughout a population. It can be set to spread more broadly. Whereas if there's no turnover, the infection in a way remains trapped. So static networks, 
often don't really clue us in as effectively as dynamic network representations to how infection can spread. And suffice it to say, and some people in this room are, are rather experts on this and have quite a lot of data, that, um, that there's a huge variety in the um, extent of network contacts, so we're contacts between individuals. So if we're considering something like the spread of flu, um, some contacts are very brief. You're standing in line next to someone at Tim Hortons, or you're passing someone in the, the bus station getting here into campus each morning, and there's a very brief contact, whereas other contacts may extend through much of the day, the people who are sitting next to you on a desk. And the amount of risk conferred associated with each of those contacts may be rather different, and the amount of of implications for the spread of infection more widely in the population may be very different. If you're sitting next to a person every day for long periods of time, that person has a pretty good chance of getting ill if you're, if you're ill with a highly transmissible infection. But they might, they might not circulate in wildly different circles of you. On the other hand, if you infect someone in a bus station, who knows where they may be You know, 12 hours from now. They may be in downtown Calgary. They may be in Manitoba somewhere, and, and they may be bring that infection more widely. So network dynamics are, are uh, very important, um, and uh, there's some very interesting work looking at network dynamics uh, and its implications for certain, area, for certain types of infections. It, it turns out that any logic, while it makes very, very easy the creation of static networks, and of fixed populations. Um, it provides very strong support as well for adding and removing population members and connections. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to qualify my statement. It provides, I wouldn't say very strong support, it provides strong support. We'll see one area where I consider it fairly weak. Um, unfortunately, this support doesn't have really direct graphical user interface support, so instead you need to you need to write little bits of, of uh, Java in order to, um, to make use of it. And specifically, if you have a population called population, let's call it population name, is, is the population in your model, and you want to add a person to that population, you can use this method add underbar population name. So maybe your population name is, is actually called, you know, um, school and so it's to be add under bar school and there'd be these parameters which are the parameters of the person or the agent to be added alternatively you can use add under bar population name uh, just specifying giving them default parameters not not specifying in which case it uses default parameters and similarly we can delete them from the population with remove under bar population name this could be remove under bar school or what have you and you give them a reference to the agent to be removed. So add population name creates, it, it gives back a reference to the new agent. So you can get a reference to the new agent from this add under bar population name, remove, given a, given a reference, it, it gets rid of that, of that individual. So those were some examples of, of changing population size. If we want to change network structure, it's, it's quite easy. We can do at agent A dot connect to agent B. So if we have two references to agents, a reference to agent A and a reference to agent B, we can connect those agents to this. Um, this will connect agent A to agent B. Now, it's important to recognize that within any logic, the, the connection is assumed to be undirected. What I mean by that is, if agent A is connected to agent B, yeah, agent B is considered connected to agent A. Okay. Um, so it's assumed to not have, it's assumed to be symmetric in terms of its implication. Now, if you wanted to have directed connections in this way, connections where there's a clear directionality associated with them, um, you, so that one person can infect another, but not vice versa. One person can influence another, but not vice versa. 
one person subscribes to another's Twitter feed, but not vice versa, for example. If you wanted to keep track of that, um, you could do so. You just have to do it outside this mechanism. You'd have to have a flag associated with each person to whom it's connected saying what direction that connection is in or both or what have you. Um, but this is the basic mechanism for connecting. And then this uh, disconnect from is, is similar. We can say, given a reference to agent A and a reference to agent B, we could say agent A dot disconnect from agent B. Um, and uh, there's uh, some additional uh, methods of relevance in the network section. Okay, um, any questions on this before we dive into a small example that shows this, that illustrates this? Connected, they can 
they can transmit to each other. But even if B and C are not directly connected, but they're connected through A, either at one time or at different times, there may be the opportunity to, to, to transmit from one to the other. So, so, you know, if person A is, is first connected with B and, and not with C, so, you know, uh, we have one connection like that, and then later they're connected with C, they might serve as a conduit for infection, right? And so if we wanted to simulate the spread of ideas or innovations or, or, or pathogens within our population, maybe it's sexually transmitted infection and, the, and, and these are sexual contacts, maybe it's needle, you know, bloodborne infection, and these are needle sharing contacts. Um, it would behoove us to think about simulating using these sort of methods that we see us he, see before us here as part of the simulation so that you, you capture the, the switch of partners that can lead to transmission. So can you basically use this sort of method to say, uh, like to have it dissolve and create different connections at yep. various times based on various yep. characteristics of the other agents? Oh, totally. Like totally. Like so, like so, so, you know, this, this connect to A connecting to B might be based on B's age relative to A or might be based on um, B's uh, proximity to A in their existing network. So, you know, you're more likely to connect to, you're more likely to share needles with someone who share ne shares needles already with one of your friends. Right, so, or based on kind of like lifestyle factors? Right, lifestyle factors, yeah. Okay. Location, okay. Um, history, um, uh, you know, again, age, ethnicity, uh, obviously, you know, sex could be a part of it too. Um, so for any of those things, that might be a motivation to connect to. But, but I'll, um, so, so in terms of capturing network dynamics, these might be shaped by any number of things. Um, and the fact that this connects to, I mean, we're looking at this in isolation, but I think what your question's getting to, Molly, is, is the fact that typically the context for this, the the context in which that would trigger a connection event like this will be highly dependent on the characteristics of agent A and agent B. This, it's not like this exists in isolation that you know people are just kind of randomly being connected based on, on no particular um, sort of uh, design. Instead, this might be embedded in a a probabilistic test that tests people around them for compatibility and gives a certain probability of connecting with different people. And once someone's selected, once person B has been selected for A, you would then say, okay, connect them, right? Um, and um, for, for one of the students I was working with, in fact, um, we had quite an evolved model of, you know, how does partner change occur during um, this was predicted for sexual connections. Um, uh, what would motivate someone to, to change partners or to increase the number of partners or to decrease? Um, you know, for example, your likelihood of gaining a new partner is higher if you have no existing connections, right? And so if you've recently, well, if, if, you, if you have no connections, your chance of gaining a new partner is, 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 is higher. And so that would have to be factored into it. So you could have what's called a little Markov model for those from computer science background. You could have a little finite state machine, right? Um, prob probabilistic thing, you know, you're, you have zero partners now, and then you have one partner, and then you have two partners. And the probabilities of transition, sort of one to two, two to three, you know, might, might decrease, right? And then there, there'd be dissolution here. So um, it, could, it could go down, and, and then there's obviously chances that someone will keep this, retain the same number of partners. So you could formulate a little, um, a, a little uh, automaton, as it would be called, a finite state automaton, a sort of set of states a person could be in and rules governing just the number of partners and that could govern um, whether they connect and then picking who to connect to would be a matter of homophily. People might prefer people like themselves, et cetera. Okay, so great question. Other questions on this? I'll mention one other 
place this comes in big time, though, since you mentioned it, and I think you're trying to fit the pieces together of how different packages come in. Another reason you might want to do this, folks, well, okay, I could, I could spend more time on this, but let me cut to the chase. Um, another reason you might want to do this is if you want to build a network structure off of empirical data that's not one of the built-in networks. So if you have some other network structure, maybe it's a network of roads, right, within the province. Maybe it's a network of people who share needles as observed within the Saskatoon Health region. Maybe it's, maybe it's outcomes from a, from a contact trace. Maybe it's data as collected via cell phones and people's proximity to each other. For all those reasons, for that sort of data, you're not going to want to just tell any logic, hey, build me this network, because it doesn't know what network to build. It's not, you can't just say, oh, this is a scale-free network or random, uh, you know, small world, or, or plus on random. You can try to fit it to one of those, but if you wanted to actually impose that data, what you do is you write a bit of code that connects people up to the appropriate people per what's in that data file. And in fact, if you go look in your example models, there's an example model that reads in from PIAC files. And it says, okay, give me a PIAC file that tells me a network. And the person tells him, and goes, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go build that network now. And it uses these methods to build up that network. Okay. But you still create from your original data in PIAC or in Scan Oh yeah. Probably. I think that's the most natural, well, that would be a natural way to do it, or, or you'd specify it in an external file of some sort, and then you'd have it read the file and, you know, suck the file and, and, it, and it reads it in, and then it, it you know, connects, connects it up accordingly. So you, you, you probably wouldn't want to hard code who is connected to directly in it. You'd instead write a file that does it, um, that, that specifies that in, in a textual form. Um, yeah. Answer your question? Yeah. Okay. 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 So uh, I have provided a model in the example model. It's called Minimalist Network ABM Model. Now it's, so it's a model which we've been um, building up to. So I'm just going to use mine, um, mine here. But um, uh, this is a model which um, we have, uh, I think I'm going to, just, just for safety's sake, to avoid uh, throwing people off, I'm going to go back to the one that's in the example models and um, uh, minimalist network ABM model and, and just open that up. So uh, operating off of the same model, hopefully you will be as well. Um, okay, and then I'm going to save this model to a different name. Uh, okay, save as and make it four. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do is to um, go here and just um, play around a little bit with this uh, dynamic networks. So I'd like you to set a small population size. So let's call up main here um, and go down and, and set a population size that's quite uh, quite small. In this model, this is kind of my version. It's before we introduce parameters for this. Normally, we'd introduce a parameter that would specify this. I'll say initial number of objects, fine. OK, so there's a question here. I think I think it looks like uh, not able to see. OK, thank you, Neil. Um, so uh, I will go back, and I'll do start sharing of the entire desktop. OK, so I think you should be able to, uh, to see um, see this in just a minute. Let me let me know in a minute if you don't see it, okay? Um, so what I did is uh, I opened this minimalist network ABM model uh, from the examples. I saved it under a different name um, just so I wouldn't be modifying it. And I created an, an initial number of objects, five. Um, uh, so uh, the next thing I'd like to do would be to um, set a distance-based network. So how would I set a distance-based network, folks? How would I impose and say, um, I'd like to see a distance-based network imposed on people? This is a model with a network. How do I impose a distance-based network? Yeah, the environment. So we go to the environment. 
go to the advanced tab of the environment specifically. Um, so uh, environment here, advanced, and uh, we go down and it should be distance based. I guess it's distance based already, so that's fine. Um, and uh, make it a high uh, connection threshold. Make it a thousand, okay? Connection range a thousand. What does that mean? What does that connection main range mean here? We saw it last week, what does it mean? What are the implications of a thousand compared to 10? It's gonna get really painful. Thank you. Thank you. My ears thank you particularly. Um, okay, so um, although then a uh, thousand or less distance and the exact corner case where it's equal to a thousand, I'm not sure what whether we connect it or not. But these are these are approximations to real numbers, the floating point numbers. So the number with exactly a thousand is, is very small. Okay. So um, okay, so next to main, let's add a button requesting adding a population member. So double click on main and then we're going to drag over a button. This is one of the first things we're doing with um, with controls but what you have to do is drag down in the palette down to the controls area and drag over uh, a button from the control from the controls area and we're gonna call it button add person okay um, and it should be label add a person enabled is true and we're going to add, we're going to have a bit of um, text here. So it's called button add person. This label's going to be add a person. It's enabled true. And the action associated with this is going to be add under bar population, begin paren, m paren, and then semicolon. So, so we're going to add the person into the population. And then we're going to tell the environment to apply the network. So recompute with an with the new person added, okay? So when we add this person, they're gonna be factored into the network. So in short, this is add under bar population. Where did this population come from? Why is it add under bar population rather than add under bar foo? Name population. Yeah, just name population. There's nothing more odd than that. So this is an automatically generated method based on the population name that we're calling here. Add under bar population. And then the next thing is environment. We're asking the environment, hey, apply your network. So say environment dot apply network. Begin for an enter colon. So I'm gonna do this right now to catch up with you folks. Um, and uh, let's go to the button, the general tab, button, uh, add population. And this is gonna be add a person, a person. And it's enabled gonna be true. And then the action is just going to be add population. And then next is environment dot apply network. Okay. Um, so let's let's save this model and then build it. Make sure it's a happy camper. Okay. I've just done model builds and it, it is a happy camper. Um, and now I'd like to run this thing. Okay. So we've just, we've just added these in. So why do I see everyone connected like this? Sorry? Yeah, so we gave it a connection range of 1,000. So it happened to lay them out as quite, quite um, entrancing design. Um, but uh, it's really, really actually nice. Um, but uh, they're, they're all connected because they're all within 1,000, right? Um, so if I add, if I press this button, what should folks? What should happen? Sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Here we're we're adding to our population, um, and the final design is less entrancing. Um, so uh, okay, so now we have. We have uh, our population, and and we have we have some um, additional elements. Okay, next, what I'd like to do. So we've just run that. Let's let's keep on. Ooh, okay, you didn't see that. No, not yet. Oh gosh. Um, okay, I'm gonna switch over to um, 
switch this over so you can specifically see see the um, the screen of any logic rather than trying to share my desktop. I don't I don't know what's throwing it off. So let's try this. Boom. Okay. So I'm now sharing any logic rather than the screen. Okay. You should now see any logic on your screen, or you should in a minute here. Let me know. Um, okay. Okay. So um, what we've done is we, we we added that functionality and to add a person. What I'd like to now do is is to have some functionality to delete a person. So tell me, folks, riddle me this. Where would I go if I wanted to delete the person when I click on them? Where, what would I do? Can anyone give me a best guess? You've seen enough that those of you who are thinking ahead can probably anticipate where it would be. How would I, how would I, how would I realize this goal of clicking on a person and having it delete the person from the population? Okay, the oval. Because the oval is the representation visually of that person. So if I'm clicking somewhere, I'm clicking on the oval. Yes, so I have to go to, that is the key point. I have to go to person. And if I go click on person, the oval, okay, so now what, I, what would I do? Okay, so I have the oval in my sights. The oval stands before me highlighted. Where would I go to make it happen that they get deleted when I click on it. Dyn dynamic and on click, yes, thank you. So it's it's the dynamic properties and it's the handler, just as we talked about last time, for, for on click. And so if we go and we, we see there's an on click handler and so we can do this. I, I should note that programmatically, for those who are interested, um, this is just a method call so you, know, you could have can handle on click in other ways by defining a method on click, etc. But but here there's an on click handler. And notice it gives us information. So it gives us these two variables click x, click y, which provide context information for any code we provide here. So we can refer to these variables if we so wish. Click and I wish I could say clack, but it was click x, click y. Okay. So um, on click, what should it do? Who's responsible for deleting from the population? Well, it, it, it turns out we're going to have to do, who, who keeps the population? Sorry? Maine. Maine is responsible. And um, the environment keeps track of the connections between people. Um, uh, but what we want to do is actually go up to Maine, go, or go down Maine, as they would say. Go, go down Maine. Um, those not from New England aren't going to get that. Um, uh, so this dot get under bar Maine dot, and then I'm going to say remove, remove under bar population. Okay. Um, so, so what am I doing here? Well, oh look at that. Remove population. Oh, I have to give it a meth. I have to give it a reference. Who? What am I going to give this as the reference? It needs. It needs to be told who to delete. So who do I? What do I give it? I give it this. This. Yes, I give it this. Um, thank you. So now, now it's a happier camper. Um, this is kind of a nice. I kind of like this in some ways because. It increases the challenge for me to do this all without autocomplete. Um, you folks get autocomplete, and I don't. And um, it, it kind of enhances the, the suspense. Um, OK, so now we should be able to run this thing. And, and what should happen now? Neil, can you see anything there? OK. so. If I go click on this, what should happen? Is that what I wanted? What happened? What happened? Sorry? Okay, 
So let's look at how many people there are. Now there's three people, uh, it's four people in the population. Zero, one, two, three, count them. Okay? So how if I click here? How many people will there be in the population now? Three, right? So why is it still showing this? Okay, so to do that, can anyone apply what I said earlier? There was a bit of code we used for the earlier thing that we need to reuse now. What, what is that code? Riddle me that. Okay, um, we could do it that, we might think we could do it that way, but that person is gone. That person is the move. That person is Sadiala. Um, so they're, they're out of there. So, so somehow we have to get it to recompute the network. Whose job is it to recompute the network? The environment. Okay. And does anyone remember? I mean, just five minutes ago, we actually typed the, the requisite code. Dot apply network. Remember, it's that same code we did for the button. Remember that? Just two minutes ago, five minutes ago maybe? We, we, when we put in the button, we said add population, apply network. Told it, hey, go recompute network. And it will go recompute the network. Right? Um, oops. Hey. Oh. Oh, it gave a, I, I did something, uh, sorry, I, I, I committed a faux pas here. Sorry, um, uh, I, I did something, I did something um, improper. Um, so, uh, oh my gosh, um, I'm thrashing. Uh, okay, so what do I have to do before environment? I can't say environment, what do I have to do, folks? Where does the environment live? Lives in Maine. Yeah, so I have to go, I have to get a reference to Maine. So I'm starting with a reference to me. I'm saying, hey, get my reference to my associated Maine. So it gets a reference to Maine up there, and then I could say, hey, Maine, give me your environment. And that gives me a reference to the environment, and then I could say, hey, environment, apply your network. Boom. Boom, done. Um, so here we go. Boom. Good or not? Good. Okay. So, so what did we do there? Let's 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 just reflect on this. The first thing we did was to add a person. Where do we add a person? Who is responsible for adding the person? Under what conditions would the person be added? Would be added if we did what? Clicked on the button. Where did the button live? It lived in. Maine and lived in Maine because we weren't clicking on a person. We were just clicking somewhere in the canvas, a distinguished area. So we wanted a button there. And that button added a person to the population and then applied the network. Now, this add population actually returns a reference to that person that we could do something with. We just didn't do anything with it. We just added them to the population so visually they'd be there and they could interact with the population subsequently. If we wanted to, we could capture that reference and do various things with it, like, I don't know, change their color or whatever. Um, and then, if we want to delete the person, what do we do? Well, we're clicking on the person in this case, on a particular person. So we went down here to person, and then we went to their oval, because that, after all, is their representation, right? Okay, so we went to their oval click event, and, and we said, okay, Remove, remove them from the population, um, remove this person from the population. Then we told, um, then we told Maine, the environment, hey, go reapply your network also. In both cases, we had to do reapply network so it would update, okay? Um, okay, so that's uh, good. I don't think I'll ask you to open this other thing, but I um, want to think about this this a bit. Um, right. Right. Um, okay, here's a bit of a challenge. 
how if I wanted to be able to click on a link? How if I wanted to be able to sculpt this network? Click on a link and I would delete that link. How would I do that? So that sounds like a good start. So I, I went to the link. This is in person because it's an aspect of their representation. The link. Now, it may not be intuitive, but the link's actually associated with one particular sort of uh, particular of the pair of people, the dyad that it collect, connects. It's actually associated with one side of that. Um, it, the, the one, I think, that added, added it or what have you. So there's an on-click handler there. Now, this on-click handler provides index as the index of the replicated line. So th this is actually fairly sophisticated, what we're doing here, in terms of the thinking that goes through. But when on-click gets, on gets pressed, when, when, I'm, when someone clicks on this, this is going to be invoked, this, this code. It's going to be invoked for a particular agent. And within this code, the agent that on whom this is invoked, this line, with whom this line is associated, how can I refer to that agent as what? Well, I can refer to that agent as, how can I refer to myself, folks? This. this thank you. Um, and and so I could refer to myself as this, and I could say this dot, and how do I disconnect from someone? This dot disconnect, this dot get, uh, sorry, dot disconnect from, and how do I how do I find out to whom I'm connected with this link, with, uh, with a particular link? By index. Yes. Yes, that's it. That's great. That's great. So this index is provided contextually. Mm hmm? This. So, so I know the index of the replicated line. This is the the first line, or the zeroth line, or the first line, or the second line associated with, with me. So I can say this dot get, I want to get the, I want to get a reference to the agent to whom this, this line is connected, the other side. I know I'm at one side, this is at one side. Who's on the other side? Well, the index of this line, the sort of the, 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 the number of that line starting at zero is given by index. And to find the person on the other side of it, I say, OK, hey, for me, who am I connected with on my ith line, where i goes 0, 1, 2? So I am connected to this dot get connected agent. I need the name. I need a reference to that, to that agent to whom I'm connected on this index line, the line numbered index. So I'm going to first, I want to disconnect myself from the person, to, from whomever, to, from the person who is on the other side of the index line. Yeah? Does that make sense? Mm. Mm. Okay. So, oh, it's, it's, it's exhibiting displeasure. So let's let's go let's go see what's going on. It says syntax error. Um insert insert what? Does it want a semicolon or what? Um it says syntax well here you can go pause up here. Oh no no what's it what this error? Syntax oh okay. So it, it needs a uh, it needs a semicolon at the end to appease the compiler god. Um, so there we go. Boom. Okay. And then we, we're going to do build 
and now it's a happy camper. Um, okay, so what I did is here again, I am disconnect when this link, the index link is clicked on. I know it's the index link, the link numbered index from this context because it tells me. So maybe this is the zero I blank. I'm going to say this dot disconnect myself from whatever agent I'm connected to with that index link. Okay. So now we should be able to, to run this and hopefully we can now sculpt our network as we see fit. Hey, um, why isn't this? Ah, there we go. Okay, well, I've got two for one. Ooh, look at that. Um, it's almost like it's deleting. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, um, it's exhibiting displeasure. Um, so, what's up? Well, my guess is we have to do the supply network again. So it will recomplete the network, because otherwise I think it's it's not, um, maybe it's not n labeling things. So uh, this dot get under bar main dot environment dot apply network, because it may not be sort of keeping it, um, keeping it consistent. I'm not sure that I believe that explanation, but let's, let's, uh, let's go see. Hey, come on, come on. Oh man, um, it's it's not it's not deleting it as I expect. Um, yeah, but it should be disconnecting from the appropriate person. Um, huh? Okay, now that's that's mighty interesting. Um, Okay, uh, Dylan, can you uh, see if, yes? Uh, Do you have to disconnect A from B and B from A? No. <laughs> okay, 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 thank you. Um, this dot, the get connections dot remove. And, and give that index? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, that's, um, okay. Um, I'm gonna, uh, okay, oh, there we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, comment that out, so I'll research that to figure out what's going on with that. But, okay, this dot get connections and then dot the get connections dot remove and then index like that you're saying? Yep. Okay. So so we're gonna try that. So sorry folks, I should have paused. Let's just go um uh test Dylan's remedy. Um Okay. Oh, 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 oh. This is exhibiting truculence still. Um did you d did you not do the apply network, Dylan? Okay. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to uh, uh, we're gonna have to un get rid of the apply network. I'm gonna have to think this through. I don't know why w why the apply network could cause a problem. I don't know why the original problem was there, but uh, I'm gonna have to go research it. Okay. Um, so let's let's go try this. Okay. Hey, works like a charm. The Delanian wrist uh, sort of therapy proves successful. Okay. Yes. Is that because uh, connections link two agents just remove one access? That's what I was wondering. And so, so when you look at an individual yeah. agent using previous method, yeah. if you click the link, it disappears. So say that again. So if, you if you look at an individual agent yeah. from the drop down menu. Oh, menu. oh, okay. So in other words, like if I went like this. Right. Uh, using the old code. Right, using the old code. Ah. So you think the links link both sides, that means it's disconnect on one side rather than Yeah, so maybe it's causing somehow a problem because you're you're only somehow disconnecting from both sides and therefore screwing up the other agents sort of mm -hmm. understand. Okay, that that could well be. And so um 
Hmm. Yeah, that's that. That seems like a, a plausible hypothesis for what might be going on. Um, I'm not sure if that code could be remedied by having it do both deletions at once. You know, like this can A disconnect from B, B disconnect from A. That might work, but anyway, I'll 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 check into this. Um, okay, so a um, bit bit distended there, but. Um, uh, a little bit more generally, um, we might use something like this to impose a, an immigration rate. So, so how would we, if we want to impose an immigration rate, so people are coming into this model at a certain number of, of, of people per time unit, say per day in this case. Um, suppose we said 10 people are coming in per day. How would we accomplish this in the model? I'm asking you to put together some things from at least one previous lecture. So suppose we wanted 10 people to be coming in per day on average. What would I do? How would I realize that? So if I wanted 10 people to be coming into this population on average per day, what construct would I use to get those people to come in be coming in. Yes, it's an event. It's an event. And it's an event with a certain rate. Because presumably these people aren't all coming in in a pulsed way. I mean, maybe they are. Once every day, a phalanx of new immigrants arrives um, and, and, you know, joins the population. But more likely, uh, rather than coming in in phalanxes, they dribble in here and there. Um, as did many of us in this room. So, so we're going to drag in something called immigrant or immigration event. Okay, I just dragged that in from the very top level population here. Immigration event. And if I want them to come in, just kind of dribble in at different random times with a certain probability, sort of a Poisson process type situation, how would I do that? How would I have them come in with a certain probability per unit time? I'd use a... Good, thank you. Um, a rate. And let's suppose it's 10 per unit time. 10 people per day. The rate would be, ladies and gentlemen, 10. That's what I, I was emphasizing. This is a, it's a rate per unit time, chance per unit time case it's 10. How often would, what's the average time between people coming in? This is a rate of 10. What's the average time between of people arriving? It is 1 over 10. Remember we saw that with first order delays where you have a certain chance of leaving per unit time. If you have an alpha coefficient, your chance per unit time of leaving is 0.1, then your average time in the stock is 10. If your alpha is 10, your average time in the stock is 0.1, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a rate of 10. I will say 10.0 to make it, make it clear I'm dealing with a thing. Okay, so those immigrants are arriving, but they're not doing anything now. To make them do something, what do they have to do? If we want those immigrants to be adding to the population, what do we have to do? Speak, use. Okay, but even more fundamentally than the network, there needs they need to be added to the Population. Thank you. Um, okay, action. Um, so we need to do, well, if we want to be careful about it, this dot population, or we could just say population dot um, dot, oh, excuse me. Ooh, I have to be careful. This dot what? Add under bar population, right? So we'll add someone with default characteristics of the population. Okay, so let's let's add them in. And then there they come. But as Dylan said, they ain't connected with the network yet. Here they come, swarming in. 
Okay, so if we want to add them into the to the network, then what do we have to do? Please tell me what to type. Who's responsible for the network? Environment. So I have to tell the environment to do what? To apply network. All right. Boom. Okay. So now we come in. Um, so let's let's run this thing. Okay. Boom. There they are. <coughs> Joining in. Okay, overflowing the, the local sector. Um, okay, so, and of course, if we wanted them to be applied, if we wanted them as a final thing here, suppose we, we like this kind of them joining the network, but we don't want to connect everyone up to everyone. We only want people connected with people that are nearby. How would we do that? Right now we're having people connected, seems to everyone with everyone, because we have a width of 500 and a, a breadth, uh, a, a height of 500 of the area, and we're connecting up everyone in a thin distance of 1,000. Let's change this so that we only connect people up within a distance of 50. Okay? Or say 100. Say 100 and we'll, we'll make it 100, okay? And then we'll run this and they'll be added in. Um, Okay, so here we go. And now people are getting added in, and here comes the network. People are being wired into this local network. Does that make sense to people? So, so now they're coming in, they're being, they're being added at a random location, and then they're Based on that location, they're connected up with neighbors. Okay. Um, okay. So those are some elements that combine together aspects of of the um, uh, of the uh, events and of the uh, of the uh, network dynamics. Okay. Okay. So. Um, uh, suffice it to say that if we were dealing with uh, a model that was richer, that had heterogeneous uh, characteristics, we would, when we add someone into the population, we'd probably want to set their characteristics. So at the immigration event, for example, we might compute their, their characteristics of, for add population, or we might want to set their location so that they're located near people like them or what have you, in which case we could set their population at this point, set their X and Y location, for example. Um, alternatively, we could make their default characteristics, set characteristics from, um, you pick them randomly, but often we'll have more logic here as to kind of what their characteristics are, who they're near, who they're connected with, etc. Okay. Um, and so similarly, if we had uh, births occurring, we could add people in in the same way. We just add them to the population. Okay, so um, that's an illustration.